Our next guest is on the ground in India and has witnessed firsthand the devastation the coronavirus has caused as many Indians has str have struggled to find treatment. I should also mention that I am lucky enough to call this guest a good friend as well. We're joined now by freelance journalist and documentary filmmaker Richa Sanwal. She is joining us from Mumbai. So, Richa, I saw the news today that India announced it has vaccinated over 320 million people. That does seem like very encouraging news. What is it on, uh, like on the ground in India right now? as so many people are starting to get vaccinated. Yeah, Kristen, uh, you know, India just released uh, the news report this just today that we vaccinated about 323 million, uh, you know, uh, people, or at least we've given out those many doses, um, which, is, which is obviously a great number. But if you really compare, um, you know, with the U.S. numbers, um, U.S. has vaccinated almost half of its population so far with the same number, but we've only got gotten to about four to five percent of Indian population uh, by, by giving out 323.6 million doses so far. Um, so the numbers are, they look good, but if you really compare it to the overall population, we, we have a long way to go still. And, uh, and given, given the current situation in India, um, you know, I think the government is trying, uh, uh, you know, its level best and they're, they've ramped up uh, manufacturing and um, the effort in, in general. But I think it's a little too late. Richa, I'd love for you to share with our viewers your own personal story. I understand you were able to get your first dose of a vaccine. I'm not sure which one you got. Maybe you could tell us. But now you're being told you might have to wait up to three months for the second shot has anybody talked to you about what the efficacy of that second shot is going to be if you wait that long? Uh, so there, I got the Oxford, the AstraZeneca. That's the most popular here in India for us. Uh, I've got my first shot. I have to wait for 84 days to get my second shot. Um, the efficacy of the vaccine would be 69% once I get both my shots. Um, there, there are concerns about the gap between the two doses because when we first started the inoculation drive in India, which was on January 20, uh, January 16th, 2021, uh, the gap between the Oxford, the AstraZeneca doses were, was about a month. And then, um, you know, after the second wave, uh, you know, there were reports that the gap would go uh, anywhere from anywhere to 84 to 104 days. Um, and that's what even Oxford has recommended now. So there's a lot of ambiguity with with the you know with the vaccination drive right now um, we don't have a lot of options here uh, primarily only getting uh, the oxford astrazeneca vaccine we have a homegrown uh, vaccine which has not been approved by uh, you know the world health organization but a lot of people have also been administered those doses uh, we've got the sputnik 5 uh, from russia which has also you know which has recently come into the market in india and we're waiting for pfizer to get its approval uh, from the Indian government. So we're really left with no choices here. And, uh, you know, all of us, you know, I, I wanted to personally get the Pfizer one, but, you know, the approvals are not in place. Uh, I didn't want to wait any longer. I, I was getting the COVID, uh, sorry, the uh, Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine. So I went ahead and I went ahead and got that one. So, Richa, I know that India just recently went through a second wave and, and you started actually a Facebook group, which has several thousand members to essentially crowdsource finding treatment and hospital beds for Indians that have not been able to have that access. I know that there is a little bit of a lull right now. I know that India has, you know, loosened some of the restrictions. But are there concerns of this third wave, especially as we hear about this Delta variant? How is perhaps just your group, but even the government of India, perhaps preparing for that third wave? How concerned are you about that? Uh, Christian, you know, uh, we've recently eased lockdowns because, you know, after the second, after the second wave sort of, you know, really had a, you know, re wreaked havoc in India, there was a lot of, you know, fear and concern and also trauma that a lot of us went through. You know, like you rightly said, uh, there were a lot of SOS requests coming in through social media. People were, uh, you know, desperately seeking help, uh, whatever they could find. And we tried to help out as much as we could. I was also someone who needed help for my mother's treatment when she was fighting 
uh, COVID in the hospital about two months ago. So it's been a very traumatic experience for India in general after the second wave. And, you know, the numbers have come down now because, you know, we, we were under a very strict talk lockdown for about two months. Um, so the government has eased restrictions. Uh, but now I see a lot of people going out and about. A lot of offices are calling people back to work in a staggered manner. But, you know, people are reporting to work physically. Um, people are also going out, traveling, going out to restaurants, um, flouting rules. I, I don't see a lot of COVID-appropriate behavior being followed. Um, that is really concerning for me. And given that we do have a new mutation in the form of Delta and Delta Plus, um, you know, the new variants that are, that, that are found in over 12 countries uh, at the moment, we can't let our guard down. So uh, the government has been monitoring the situation closely. I think they are also trying to be more prepared with it after uh, what happened during the second wave about two months ago. So, um, so yeah, the government is on top of it. They are monitoring. They're, they've localized the, via the variant, the new variant. But of course, it is of concern because it will, if it spreads and if we don't take the right precautions. Um, it could turn out to be even more deadly than the second wave that India just experienced uh, not too long ago. Yeah, and that was devastating, and, and we certainly don't want that to happen. So what are what's the Indian government, what are the Indian people looking for in terms of help from outside of the country, and especially from wealthier nations like the U.S.? I think right now the focus is, you know, to inoculate as many people as we can in India, because that is really the way to uh, safeguard uh, from any, you know, future mutations of this virus. Um, I think that, uh, you know, after in the last few months, we've noticed how, you know, rich countries, wealthy nations like the U.S. and a lot of European nations have a monopoly over how they get the vaccine. Um, you know, uh, I think that sort of I, I believe that no one is safe until everyone is safe. And I think the wealthier nations need to sort of also contribute towards, you know, countries like India and other South Asian and Asian countries that need that support and, and the, the financial and the monetary support really to get the vaccines. Because, you know, like we, we, only, we only vaccinated about 5% of the Indian population, which is really nothing to, you know, to attain herd immunity eventually. Um, the goal right now of the Indian government is to inoculate um, about 70% by the end of this year, so by December. Uh, you know, but there's a long way to go for that. And, uh, you know, while we have ramped up uh, production of the vaccine, uh, the, the efforts have scaled up also. There is still so much to do because of the size of the population here. All right, we're going to have to leave that there. Richard Sanwal, freelance journalist and documentary filmmaker, joining us from Mumbai. Thanks so much for joining us today.